It's another episode of the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Podcast! 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 Hey, everybody. It's James Arnold Taylor, and it is the uh, podcast. This is the podcast you're looking for. I do that. So, when, uh, so welcome to the show. It's called Talking to Myself. I am James Arnold Taylor. I'm a voice actor. I spend my days in little padded rooms talking to myself. You see, because I... I'm on microphones talking like I am right now. I'm in a padded, I am literally, and I, you know me, I always say don't overuse the word literally. I am literally in a room with padded walls, a padded ceiling, and a microphone. And I am literally talking to only myself right now because I'm recording this and you'll listen to it and you'll be listening to it. But when I'm recording it, nobody's listening. I don't do it live. So it's called Talking to Myself, and I do voices. Uh, That's what I've been my entire life. I have wanted to be a voice actor and voice cartoon characters and things and uh, stuff. And now that's what I've been able to do. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, yep, there there you go. Praise the Lord. There it is. (laughs) Sorry, not trying to make anybody uncomfortable. All right, hey, speaking of... um, uncomfortable no uh no what i was gonna say before is it's funny uh people will have me on their podcast i get invited to be on podcasts quite often and if you've invited me to be on your podcast thank you so much i'm i'm taking i'm taking a bit of a break from everything right now uh other than this i'm doing this right now because because i want to i always want to be an encouragement to all of you all of you that listen to this show and there's, I don't know, there's a few thousand of us that, that listen, because I listen to the show too. And I listen back to see, you know, how it sounds and what I did and all of that, and if it's entertaining and fun. And all of you that listen to the show, I, I want to always be encouraging you and be uh, an encouragement to you and, and make you feel good. I do voices. Oh, so yeah. So I, I, a lot of times I get asked to do, you know, this is the such and such podcast. They want me to do a Zobi one Kenobi and This is the podcast you're looking for. So, you know, the old Jedi mind trick. So that's kind of one of my, uh, one of my things. See, you know, I think if you, if you have followed me, uh, for any length of time, you would find that I say the same stories over and over and over and over again, but so do all actors and all of us go, this has got to be really boring. People have heard this before. And the crazy thing is is though there are many of you that have heard the stories before, there are many that haven't. And that's why you keep saying them and that's why you keep doing them and that's why, you know, I do the voices and all of that. I remember when I was hosting the the event Star Wars Weekends out in Florida, I did that for five years. I, I was at Star Wars Weekends for seven years. I hosted five of the seven years I was at it. And then I hosted two of the, I don't know how many years I've been at Star Wars Celebration. And my director for those shows was a fellow by the name of Mark Renfro, good fellow, a fellow believer, good man. And um, he would always remind me to do the voices on stage. He'd go, you kind of downplay it, James. You go, yeah, I'm James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi and stuff. He goes, but people want to hear the voices. They all, everybody wants to hear the voices. And when you do the voices, you kind of forget that it's, still a little magic to people. And that's why the podcast here, you know, when I listen uh, to uh, Hank, uh, Hank is our engineer on the show. Hank's the one that pushes all the buttons and wires up the studio. Hey, Hank! Hey, Hank! Hey, Hank! Hey, hey, Hank! You always call, hey, Hank! And then I come on and I go, hello, 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 let me test the microphone. All right, stop it! (laughs) Hank is the engineer of the show. And I say you push the buttons and stuff, but you're never here. Well, no, you know, I'm, bu- I'm, bu- I'm busy, I'm busy, I, you know, I set up everything and then I, and then I leave it for you and then I let you, you know, come in here and get on the microphone and do your thing and you act like, you know, you, what are you doing the air quotes again? You know, you quote, unquote, the talent, quote, unquote, here we go again, quote, unquote, you know, my wife now says, quote, unquote. Yeah, it's good. You know, I'm a, I'm a trendsetter. I, I like to set the trends and then the people follow me, especially the ladies. The ladies like to follow Hank. Is that right? You're something, I'll tell you that much. Yeah. You know, I was thinking we should have your wife on sometime. 
because we've we've introduced a lot of new characters on the show. If so, there's been thirty. This is the thirty first episode of the James Arnold Taylor podcast. That's a lot, you know. I know. It's on one hand, for a podcast, that maybe that's not a lot because some people podcast daily, some people podcast every week. I have not been podcasting every week lately, and I'm sorry to all of you that got used to there being a regular podcast once a week. But um, I had to pull back a little. I need to uh, sometimes, as a creative, as an artist, as somebody that creates things, sometimes you get uh, in a little rut. That's also why, like TV shows, take a hiatus. You know, they do 12 episodes or nine episodes or 16 episodes or 24. It used to be like 24 to 36 episodes a season. And then, but now it's much smaller because movies and show, shows are more like movies. But you take a break so you can kind of get back on track and look at it and everything. But I see that's usually with like crews. There is no crew here, even though there's Billy, Billy the intern. Billy? Hey, Billy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, Mr. James. So, yeah, yeah, same, same. Just James. So, James, James, James a lot. Okay. So, Billy, you're my intern here at the show. Yes, yeah, so, you know, I'm your intern, and I like to, you know, get you coffee and uh, do things. Even though I don't drink coffee? Yes, yeah, but that's true. That's true. What? No, no, I was waiting for you to talk, and then, you know, I would talk afterwards because I'm your intern. Okay. All right. Well, yes, so you're the intern, and Hank here. Hey, Hank, hey. He's the engineer, and we have uh, a Mr. Announcer. Oh, we need Mr. Announcer guy to introduce the show, shouldn't we, guys? Yes, no, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, no, you do, do your thing, or you're right, Mr. Announcer guy. Hey, Mr. Announcer guy. All right, well, you guys both did. Hey, Mr. Announcer guy. Yes, James, I won't come in unless you do it. I knew they were both just trying to call me. Oh, that's so sweet of you. So Mr. Announcer Guy is the one that announces the show and lets you all know what it is. And anytime we have big announcements, although Mr. Announcer Guy, you have, you have brothers. That's right. I have my brother, Charlton, who's older. Hey, Chucky. Oh, you call him Chucky. I do now. Yeah. Hello there. I'm Mr. Announcer Guy's older brother, Charlton. And whenever James needs an announcement that's a little more folksy and friendly and down home, well, I'll come in and do that announcement for him. Well, thanks, Charlton. You got it, James. And then you've got a younger brother, George. Hey, George! Hey, James. Whenever you need a family-friendly fun announcer, just give me a call, and I'll be there for you. Well, thanks, George. You got it, James. Oh, oh, and then we got Jake, the announcer guy. Hey, Jake! Yes, James. It's me, Jake. The announcer guy. Well, I think we all can guess when we bring Jake in then, anytime something dramatic happens. That's right, James. Thanks, Jake. You've got it, James. I'm gonna go now. And then, well, Mr. Announcer Guy, we've also, we've had some other, um, we have another, you have a, 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 a like a, a British cousin or something, don't you? Let's bring that guy in. I can't remember his name. <laughs> oh, no. What was his name? Let's call him Thurston. <laughs> I, that's totally wrong. Hey, Mr. Announcer Guy's British cousin, brother, guy that does that type of stuff. <laughs> Hello, James. Yes. I am also an announcer on this show. Any time you need to tell a story that's more in the vein of Harry Potter or magic. Yeah, I love your voice. Well, thank you, James. I'm a fan of your American accent as well. Hey, uh, speaking of British guys, we got Reginald. Don't call me Reggie. Hey, Reggie! Reg I mean, Reggie! Oh, see, sorry, he won't come in if I... Reginald! Oh, pip pip! Reginald! Yes, James, I heard that. So, Reginald, tell everybody what you do on the show. Well, I am the one that comes in and interviews James whenever we need to ask him important questions about his life. And we dig deeper into getting to know Jat. That's right. So you're, you're a very proper British fellow that likes to uh, dive deep when we uh, dive deep on my show here. That's right. Pip, pip, and cheerio and all that. Well, I'm, I, you know, I'm just saying. We don't say that. We don't say pip, pip, and cheerio. I might say cheers as I leave. Well, that's good. Well, thank you, Reginald. Don't call me Reggie. You've got it, James. <laughs> all right. Oh, well, um, we got, I mean, there's other characters. We call characters. There's people on the phone that we call. We got oh, we've got uh, Jake, um, no uh, uh, Jerry the Music Man who plays all the music, and cues all the music. Hey, Jerry the Music Man. Yeah, James, I'm Jerry the Music Man. 
you're kind of a 40s radio kind of hipster guy, and uh, you choose all the music here, and so we should probably get on with it, Mr. Announcer Guy. You've been very patiently waiting to introduce the show. You want to introduce the show? It's what I live for, James. All right, Jerry the Music Man, cue that music. You got it, Mr. Announcer Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the James Arnold Taylor Podcast, talking to myself, the Jetcast, episode 31. Ooh. And now, here he is, the guy that does all the voices because he's in a little padded room, talking to himself, because you see, that's why the show is called Talking to Myself in this <laughs> with a whole thing. Yeah, I think they get it. Yes. James Arnold Taylor! Thank you. You get it, James. I'm going to go now. And everybody else left, too. That's nice. So there you go. Uh, Those are some of the characters. There's many other characters on the show. We have people that call in. We have Ferris. We call Ferris from the Billiard Zone, and he's kind of a um, guru kind of guy whenever I need advice. My agent, Franklin. His son, Brian. Uh, We've got uh, Guinevere, the biggest James Arnold Taylor fan on the planet. She calls in. Uh, We call her sometimes, too. I'm sure there's other characters. There's been other characters on the show. Um, many characters on this show because it's just me talking to me about life and you and stuff. And, and, and there's, there's, wait, there's lots of stuff to talk about. There's, there's so much. Ah, I'm stretching. Oh, boy. You ever get a really, like, a stretch like that? You get that, that whoa, really big stretch. Ah, I, you know what I, I always think is fun? I always think it's funny when like a you see a dog or a cat or an animal stretch like that like, like I used to have a little dog his name was Elmo and he was awesome and he would get up after sitting and then he'd he'd stretch and he'd go like it was like it would start at the front of his body and then it would go back through his middle and then his back legs and then he'd kind of kick out his back legs and stretch them ah oh, that's funny I just had a big stretch like that and I've been sitting here doing all these voices and they go whoa and it, Oh, I gotta stretch. So everybody should stretch. And you should have your... Do you have your water? Do you have your water? Okay, hang on. Ah, that's good water. That's good water. Drink some water for the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. And what can we talk about? You know... I'm Reginald all of a sudden. Gotta clear out the cobwebs. It's early. And uh, so... I was thinking about, so if you listen to the James Arnold Taylor podcast, and if you listened to the last episode, which by the way, sorry, it was a, a, a few weeks back. I'm, I'm, the show's coming in a little sporadically right now because it's summertime. And the truth is, is, is I love summer and I want to spend time with my family and uh, my, my daughter who is 14 and will only be 14 for a year and then will only be a teenager for so many years. And so these these summers are precious to us because we, as a family, just have a good time. We stay up late. We watch movies. We watch. We're watching Downton Abbey. We're showing my daughter Downton Abbey because uh, the movie is coming out, and she wants to see the movie because she loves all the British stuff, and I love all the British stuff. You know, that's my my heritage is British and Irish and Scottish, and um, and Italian, and uh, so, anyways, but um. <clears throat> so we all like talking in the British, you know. I will do, Mr. Carson. Yes, my lady. My lady, shall I bring you tea in the study? No. I, anyways, um, I love all the characters on Downton Abbey. So we're watching Downton Abbey. And I, 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 I'm sidetracked. But so uh, taking a little break. But if you listened to last episode, episode 30 of the uh, James Allen Taylor podcast, I gave a review of Avengers Endgame. And and I want you to know, and again, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, uh, well, I'm, I mean, I, I, this doesn't really, I'm not going to talk about specifics of it. I'm just going to say, I didn't like the movie. And that's what I say. And here's what's great. Here's what's great about the James Arnold Taylor podcast. <laughs> I can't even get through that with a straight face because I'm basically patting myself on the back. I'm not. I'm not. Here's what I love about the show is many of you disagreed. In fact, probably most people disagreed with me. Most most people loved Avengers Endgame. But here's what I like. Here's what it did. And and 
I pulled a little Jedi mind trick on all of you too. I did it on purpose. Now, did I hate the movie? No, I didn't hate the movie, but I I strongly disliked it. (laughs) But I also, I didn't hold back in my description of it because I wanted to get a reaction from you. And the great thing is, is so many of you then emailed me or commented on the YouTube channel where you can put comments and stuff about your feelings of why you disagreed with me or you thought it was good or you thought this or that. And and generally speaking, 99% of you said, that's fine, James, I respect your opinion, but this is why, you know, I think you're wrong. That's, that's the whole point. That was the entire point of me mentioning that. And I wanted, it was a little social experiment on my part. I wanted to see the reaction. I didn't want to flavor it uh, and say what I was doing until afterwards. And so I wanted to see how you all would react to me, James, somebody you like, somebody you hopefully look up to, respect. Uh, Maybe some of you think of me as kind of a mentory kind of figure and such. Um, Saying something that you disagree with. And it's not like I don't, I, I'm sure I say things on here often. I mean, many of you uh, don't believe the same way as I believe, you know, as we talk about uh, often on the show, that I'm a person of Christian faith and many of you are not, you know, many of you are atheists and stuff. And I get great letters from the atheists and, and I've written back to many of you, uh, but I've not heard back from everybody. But anyways, um, and that's a whole other topic we're going to discuss here in a minute. But so I purposely kind of did it to get a charge out of you all. To see, I was so blatant. I was so, you know, like, I didn't like it. It was stupid. And this is why, you know, and all that, right? And it's really important in life, especially in this day and age. See, I'm talking about Downton Abbey. If you watch Downton Abbey, here's one of the things I love about that show. They can have a disagreement. I mean, like a huge disagreement, like a, like a real disagreement for about real things, you know, life or death things or political things or, or whatever things on that show. And they will show the way people used to handle it, <laughs> which is, well, wait, hey, let's get Reginald here. Reginald. Hey, Reginald. Yes, James, I hear you talking about Downton Abbey. And so you thought you'd bring in the Brit. Well, yeah, no, I did. Because can we role play here for a second? Yes, of course, I love role play. I was, I was in plays as a child. Okay, all right, well, good. So, on Downton Abbey, if they have a disagreement, they will say, You know, my friend, I just want you to know that I really didn't enjoy Avengers Endgame. I felt it didn't give the feeling I was hoping for. And then I would say, Well, I, I hear what you're saying, old man, but I would have to disagree. Because I felt there was hope and a future from all of it. Quite right, yes. I, I, I understand that you believe that. I suppose never the twain shall meet. Yes, very good, my friend. We'll, we'll have to disagree agreeably. Very well. But you're a gentleman. Well, and, and you are as well. Thank you. And that, that, that's what they do. I love it on that show. They will adamantly disagree about but they will do it in a in a really nice way um because 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 oh this is the this is the main point this is the main point of the whole show because they are coming from a point of understanding that the other person is a human being has feelings that may just differ from their own and they're not necessarily bad for having those feelings or feeling those and they may believe that because of good reasons, not just evil intent. In other words, everybody else that thinks differently than you is not evil. That's a huge problem we have in our society today is if someone disagrees, they must be wrong, evil, bad, of ill intent. But both sides could be of the right intent, but just not agreeing. I hope that makes sense because it's it's kind of the theme of this whole show and why I did my whole little thing about Endgame uh, to get some of you to express your opinions, which you all did so well. It was it was awesome. And that's how it's supposed to be. And that's what so many of you did. And it's also important for you to see that you and I may not agree on everything all the time. 
Uh, my good friend Tom Wilson and I uh, talk about this often. That Tom and I, for example, we're very good friends. And we agree probably 85% of the time on things. And that's pretty good. But see, I think in this day and age, what we're kind of teaching is no, you must agree 99.9999% of the times, which is basically 100% of the times. And if you don't, you're against me or you're evil or you're uh, not a friend. And and that's that's not true. In fact, the reason we have the world we have and the state we have, uh, the, the, the state of things, um, uh, of, of technology and everything is because people disagreed and they went to look for more and to seek more and to, to, to prove people wrong, but not necessarily in a way of I'll show them. And maybe sometimes it is, but it was, even if it was I'll show them, it was I'll show them as a gentleman, I will show them and Boy, they won't like that, will they? And they'll say, I don't like that. And I'll say, very good, thank you. <laughs> but but that other side also has to be willing to be wrong, which is what we talk about on the show all the time too. Both sides need to be willing to be wrong and hear both sides in order to then come to an agreement, even if it's a disagreement. <laughs> so it was my little social experiment to see how you all would react, but also to start putting into your head the notion that sometimes James is going to say things that I disagree with, but I still love him. I still think he's great. And he's, his argument was his own argument. It was fair. That's a really, um, that's an important thing to learn in life, to agree, to disagree agreeably, and to continue to see that the other person's point isn't always just wrong. See, now my opinion of Avengers Endgame wasn't wrong because it's my opinion and from a certain point of view, right? So opinions, we all have them. Uh, you know the expression, I won't get into it. Um, but they're not necessarily wrong, okay? Some people can say things that are just blatantly wrong, you know, but, you know, black is white or white is black or this is that, or you know what I mean? Two plus two is equals 75. Uh, it, but... For the most part, in a civil discourse, people will be saying things that are based in their opinion, are based in feelings. See, that's the other thing is I, I let myself get kind of emotional about it. And I, again, I did it on purpose. I'm, I mean, as far as, I, as my real opinion of the movie was, I didn't really care much for it. I, I thought, eh, all right. I, a little depressing. And that's not really my superhero genre and 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 i'd rather movies end with a happier ending and 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 more hopeful uh and you can say well it was very helpful yes it, it did end hopeful what i my problem was i didn't like the story to begin with <laughs> i just didn't i didn't like the story to begin with i don't i, I don't want to go down the path that they took it down but good lesson of evil is persistent you know so all of you that really loved it Here's the one thing I will say as well that I didn't say before, because here's what I did like about it. Evil is persistent. You know, Thanos and evil and all of that is persistent. And you have to stand for something and you have to uh, say what you believe and you have to not back down from it. But, but, but here's the big, but <laughs> the big Thanos, but what you believe in and your feelings can't overpower truth. Okay. So that's, that's where we're, we're blurring the lines nowadays and we're, we're, we're not allowing civil discourse and because we're labeling anybody that disagrees with us as this, that, or the other. And that's very dangerous. Now I see a lot of this in, in my daughter's uh, conversation she's having at, at church and with her friends and with uh, other kids that are not being taught this and it, it affects me. And so that's why I wanted to talk about it here is make sure, as I've always said, make sure you, you know more than you want to know and you know what you believe and why you believe it, how you came to that belief and what it means to you and don't allow and uh, allow yourself to be wrong and, and don't allow your feelings to cloud your judgment of truth. 
because you can feel something without a doubt that this is it. And that can be it for you, but that doesn't mean it's the ultimate truth in life. We're getting heavy here on the uh, James Arnold Taylor podcast. But um, so, and, and I did all of that by saying, yeah, Avengers Endgame stunk. <laughs> but I, you know, I mean, because again, the, the reality of it is if you were one of my, my buddies and you said, oh, did you see Avengers Endgame? I go, yeah. And they go, what do you think? I go, meh. And that's, that's as far as it would go. But I, I thought, no, I'm really going to push it to see what happens and to see how you react. And you know what? You, so many of you just went, James, okay, this, but, but here's why I disagree. And that's great. I love seeing that there's still proper civil dis- discourse, but I also really, the ultimate goal was it for you to see, here's a guy I like. Am I going to now stop listening? Well, if you did stop listening, you're not listening. So it doesn't. <laughs> and you gave me a thumbs down and you walk away. See, stupid. Or are you going to go, Okay, he said one thing that I didn't like. Get used to it, okay? Get used to it because in life, there's going to be all sorts of people that you really like, you look up to, you admire, that don't agree with you 100% of the time or that you don't agree with them 100% of the time. And that's totally okay. That's how you develop into you, okay? So it's okay to disagree but it is not okay to then act out and label and and create problems where there isn't. That is the problem with all the politics in this world. I don't get political on the show, but I will say that. That's the problem with politics and, and, and uh, the media and all that stuff is it's not okay to have a differing opinion than the one that is being given and on either side, either side of the spectrum. And that, to me, makes it all really yucky. (laughs) That's a big technical adult term, but really yucky. Stinky, poopy, yucky. All right. Um, So that was the lesson. That was the Obi-Wan Kenobi lesson for you on the James Arnold Taylor podcast from last episode. Last time on the James Arnold Taylor podcast. (laughs) Yeah, no. Um, So know what you believe, know why you believe it. Agree to agree, uh, agree to disagree agreeably. Knowing that the other person is not evil if they don't think exactly as you think. See, I think many, many, many people in the world nowadays have not been told no from a young age. It is okay to be told no. Because you know why? Sometimes no actually is the right answer. It's okay to be wrong. So here's my challenge to you. This week, point out to yourself a place where you've been wrong. And deal with it. Take it in. Breathe it in. I was wrong. And that's okay. The world didn't end. And I, I don't have to get angry. And everybody still loves me. And it's all okay. It is totally okay to be wrong. I, I You know, I have disagreements with my, my wife, my daughter, uh, on a regular basis. And when I'm wrong, I go, I'm wrong. And when I'm right, I don't go, I'm right. See, that's the other, that's the flip side. If I'm right and somebody else is wrong, I don't, I don't really get into it. I don't go, see, now you see, this is what. I let them come to that conclusion. And, and just like I will come to the conclusion if they're right and I'm wrong. And I'll go, you know, I, I was wrong on that. It's one of the, one of the best things you can do for yourself is be wrong and be okay with being wrong. Okay. So there you go. Because uh, you know, and jumping back to the, uh, the whole thing, the comments that a lot of people said about end, end game and stuff, you were, you were absolutely right. And it, the, the movie was filled with hope and it was filled with, um, do the right thing and fight to the end and all of that. But I wanted to see how you all would react. So, okay, there you go. Um, so did I, did I hate Avengers Endgame? No, I didn't hate it, but I didn't like it. <laughs> and I, I didn't like it just because I, that's not my kind of movie. I, I'd rather see stuff that didn't, didn't, I, look, I mean, I just didn't like any of those. I mean, but because the difference between like those and Star Wars, because you could say, well, it was the same thing, uh, good versus evil and all of that is, yeah, but Star Wars 
the original Star Wars, um, Return of the Jedi. And a lot, a lot of people think that's corny, but it ends with, you know, happy ending. Everybody looking off to the camera and smiling and there you go. And, and it, for me, for my generation, that's what movies were about. That's the other thing too, that I'm very aware of. And I was very aware of it when I uh, said I was going to say my, my response to the movie and stuff is I know that many of you, most of you that listen are not within my age bracket. Some of you are. And the funny thing is, is then you, you all that are, you send me emails and comments on, on the YouTube and stuff. And, uh, and, and we're generally in agreement. It's, it's a generational thing. So here's the other important thing for all of you that are in a younger generation, whether you're a millennial or you're a Gen Z, know that generationally there will be clashes of opinion and that's okay. Okay. It doesn't mean if someone's older and they say the problem with your generation, because I say that to my daughter a lot and she gets a look on her face. And when I'm saying it, I'm not saying it to pick apart that I'm saying it to say, here's what I see as somebody that is older and does have some wisdom and some insight on this because I made the same mistakes. Here's what I'm seeing happening within your generation. And you can then choose to then go, okay, somebody's about to give me advice. Or you can then go, oh, here they go again. Now, my daughter is pretty great at realizing because also my wife and I have uh, enforced and reinforced and reinforced in her. Now, when we say that, we're not criticizing. We're simply saying something. And so she she gets it, but she doesn't roll her eyes as much. But I mean, she does to a degree. But she doesn't sit there and think, oh, they're, wow, they're a bunch of jerks and they just don't understand. And I think many people do. And if you're one of those people, um, hear that. Just know that, yeah, look, a lot of people are jerks. And a lot of people go, well, in my day, and you're all a bunch of jerk faces. Um, but most people, especially most adults, especially like your parents and stuff, are saying things because one, they get frustrated and they don't know how to convey that information other than that. And then as your parent, they get frustrated because their job, first off, fear. Fear pops up because their job is to protect you at all costs and to love you at all costs. And all of a sudden, boop, something pops up that says, we are in a disagreement. We will never see eye to eye. And I've got to do something to change their opinion because they're going down a path that could hurt themselves. And so parents then react and they react and they think, well, let me, let me tell you something. And you, oh, right. So you really have to learn. So if you're a parent on this too, you have to learn to take that breath and to look at it from all sides and to put yourself in the other person's shoes. I spend so much of my day in life putting myself in the other person's shoes and asking people to do the same. Put yourself in my shoes and understand that. When we have a problem, like a customer service problem, where something's wrong with one of our you know, accounts uh, somewhere and we have to call somebody and go, well, this is what happened. I've noticed that from when I was younger and you would call, the customer was always right. The customer is no longer right. Uh, the customer is a jerk face that has a, a an opinion that is wrong. And that's because we've all been learning that we are the center of the universe and we are the most important thing. And whatever we believe is our belief system and it is right until we figure out otherwise. <laughs> and so that's a dangerous place to start. So I am noticing, uh, like when you call customer service now, it's you get defensive people. You get people telling you you're wrong, even if you can prove you're right. Um, it's a it's a problem. And so we all have to learn to be wrong and that it's okay when we are wrong. It doesn't mean to be wrong if you're not wrong, but if you are not wrong, you also need to learn how to explain that the right way. <laughs> It's all to say life is a balance and it's all also to say that if you're young and you're still learning things in life, just know you're young and you're still learning things in life. That's, that's really it. Look at the beauty of it. And then when someone corrects you, take it in and go, wow, I got wisdom. Think of it as, you know, uh, Yoda teaching Luke. 
I mean, we all relate to that. We all go, yeah, Luke was being stupid. And, you know, he, he couldn't pull the X-Wing out because he just was, you know, mm, I, can't, I can't do it. It's impossible. You know, it's too big. Judge me by my size, right? So all those things still pertain to your generation, to my generation, to all of us. And take that in and remember that every day. So that's really the whole point of this this week's episode is, is to, to learn how to be wrong. And that's, that's your challenge this week. When you are wrong at, at some point, and if you journal, which I encourage all of you to journal or a diary or, you know, write, write things down, log them either, you know, you could do a video diary. You could, you could write it down. There's many different ways to log your thoughts. Um, but the, probably the best and most basic and long-term way is to have a little journal, a little book that you can write in and write your thoughts and keep it safe and go back later and look at it. And you look and see things in your life that you've learned. I, I should, I should look through some of my ones that I've written from back when I was in my twenties and stuff. Cause I still have them all and look back at some of them and, and see what I can pull out of there and, uh, read them to you sometime on the show. Maybe I'll do that at some point, but, um, this week challenge yourself to be wrong and be okay with it. And all I mean by that is like, don't purposely make yourself wrong. But when you're put in a position this week where somebody's kind of correcting you on something, and it could be a big thing, it could be a little thing, it could be an insignificant thing. Uh, and in fact, if it's an insignificant thing, it's probably the best way to start practicing. Because that's all I'm trying to get you to do is learn uh, muscles to practice uh, these things in life. Because the more you have that reflex of learning to be wrong when you're wrong and actually admitting it and moving on, the easier your life is going to get because it's no big deal to be wrong. And that's some of the best way to learn. Okay. So that's the big lesson. So when you're, when you are wrong about something this week, whatever it is, you know, maybe you write it down, maybe you jot it down and you go, you know what? Jat was right. I learned, I learned a little lesson there and, and I just went, okay, sorry, I was wrong. Now, look, I'm not predicting that everybody you deal with in that is going to react properly because as I was saying, we are in a time where people have been entitled quite a bit. And so you could admit fault with somebody that's, you know, your own age or that you're dealing with, and they may just rub your nose in it. It may not go perfectly. More than likely, if you're in a disagreement with an adult, uh, somebody of significant age, older than you, they're going to go, well, thank you for saying that because they've learned, hopefully they've learned. But if, you know, if you're, say, you know, a teenager and your teenage friend uh, has that conflict with you and stuff and you say, you know, I was wrong, their, their initial instinct might go, yeah, see? <laughs> but then later they're going to go, you know, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And just like you would. I mean, just put yourself, again, reverse it. Put yourself in their shoes. And how would you feel if somebody goes, you know what? I, uh, you're right. I was totally wrong on that. And that's the, that's the other lesson for this week then is if you're in that position to not judge somebody then and to not rub their nose in it, because that's again, civil discourse. That's how we're supposed to be as, uh, humans in the greatest time period of all time periods. We have more technology and more things at our fingertips than, than ever before. So let's not use it to rub people's noses in, in things or to be elitist or to be entitled. Let's use it to learn and grow even more because I think there is still wonderful new things to explore and to grow and to change in this world. And the only way we can do that is if we're all willing to communicate and get along with each other and even when we don't agree. So, you know, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a huge thing. And I think that's why other generations, uh, f uh, you know, had failures when people, you know, leaders and wars and things have happened because people refuse to give in. Um, and now we have little mini wars going on all over the place on social media and on the news and, and in homes and in classrooms and in uh, churches. And because people are saying, no, this is my opinion and my opinion is the opinion and if you disagree with that, I'm going to label you and I'm going to judge you and I'm going to hate you. And that's not on, on, on either side. We are not supposed to do that. I, I, it is not my place to judge anybody uh, in that way. Okay. I can judge right and wrong. And you can say, well, but 
that's your opinion of what right and wrong is. Right. So I do my best to not make it my opinion of what's right and wrong. I do my best to do that based off of what I believe and what I know uh, uh, and feel uh, to be true. And that is based off of moral, ethical, common, agreed knowledge worldwide. And that goes outside of me. So it's not just based on <clears throat> the gospel according to James. It's the gospel according to God. Um, and so that's my meter. What's your meter? I don't know. Uh, if you're a believer like me, then it's the same as mine. If it's not, well, just know it's got to add up. It's got to actually mathematically, scientifically add up. Anyways, that's our, that's our little uh, topic of discussion here today. But I think it's wonderful, isn't it? It's wonderful. It's wonderful to learn and to grow and to agree to disagree agreeably. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, speaking of um, summertime, as I was saying, uh, and taking some time off. So I'm going to Atlanta in a couple days. In two days, I get on a plane and I fly to Atlanta to Atlanta Comic Con. Although this podcast, I don't know if this will. Yeah, I guess this will have come out probably. I, I'm recording this on Tuesday. I'll probably finish this today and put it out tomorrow, which is Wednesday, which is when the podcast... Oh, look at that. It's when podcast normally comes out. So there you go. Anyways, um, so I've got Comic-Cons and I've got, I've got a lot of them. In August, next month, I have three Comic-Cons in four of the, four of the weeks, four weeks of the month, uh, three out of those four weeks, I'm going to Comic-Cons. So that's pretty crazy. And uh, pray for me if you're one that prays. Pray that uh, my health is good and my uh, uh, my uh, I don't get sick or anything. And um, and here's the other thing for me personally, I have um, I don't have the greatest ears, uh, and so I have very sensitive eardrums, and I've uh, I have issues sometimes flying, and so uh, that's why uh, one of the reasons I've had to cancel Comic Cons in the past is because of uh, that, and so. Um, so if you're one that prays, pray that James, good old James's ears hold up on all that flying, all those weeks of flying and this next week. Oh, I was going to talk about emails and stuff. I got, um, I was, I said, oh, we'll cover that later because I got uh, last, in the last episode, I talked about uh, a, a young man, Nathaniel, Thanny, uh, who wrote me and called me uh, Jimmy. And I said, no. And I wrote back to him. And said, uh, please don't. And then he still wrote me and called me Jimmy. Well, here's uh, what I have found out since that, because he listened to the podcast. But so uh, Nathaniel, and I'm sure you're listening now, Nathaniel or Thanny, uh, uh, <laughs> check your email more often. Here's the crazy thing. I, you know, so in the past I had suggested that perhaps there was something wrong with my emails. And then all of you came back and said, no, no, you know, let me write. And I got that. And, you know, whatever. There wasn't a problem with my emails. You know what it was? A lot of you just don't check your email <laughs> or maybe your junk settings are set to whatever, but I have written back to many, 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 many people that have written to me. And a lot of you simply haven't checked your emails and seen that I've written back to you or you have, and you didn't reply back saying, wow, I got a reply from a celebrity that uh, took the time to write back to me and all of that. And that's neat because I said all of this to them and said I wanted a response, but then I'm not going to respond back to them. <laughs> but some of you, like uh, Thanny, did not check his email before sending the next email. So I, I this is a mystery to me because I have friends and you may be people like this. See, for me, I cannot, I, I may, maybe I'm OCD. Uh, I can't end my day with unopened emails. So my mailbox never has that little red dot with the, you know, 24 emails unopened. It's like, I mean, it has that red dot often because I get a lot of, e I get a lot of emails, but you know what? By the end of each day, I have opened each one and uh, at least skimmed through and gotten the gist of everything that's going on in it and seen if I need to reply right away or not. That's, that's what I do. That's my, that is my thing. Many people don't do that. And uh, that's what happens. So Nathaniel had written me, uh, emails and then I responded to him and then he didn't check his email before sending me more and that's why he was calling me Jimmy still so it was a big misunderstanding and then he sent me uh like uh five to ten more emails after that apologizing to me <laughs> 
which is, that's very nice. You didn't need to do that. It's fine. It's, we're all good. Nathaniel C., we can agree to disagree agreeably. You want to call me uh, Jimmy? I don't want to be called Jimmy. No, no, you understand now and you're not calling me that. But, um, but so that's just a weird thing to me that some of you don't actually open your emails because now I've sent many responses over the last couple of weeks while I have not been uh, doing the podcast. I have been re replying to a lot of emails. Now, look, if you didn't get one from me, you don't need to send me one saying, did you reply to me? Okay. <laughs> I get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails. You have to understand. So I don't reply to every one of them, but ones that are very specific, uh, I will reply to. And so I have spent a lot of time replying to a lot of people lately. And uh, most of you then send me one back saying thanks. But a lot of you don't. And I will say a lot of things in there, kind of pour a lot of things out. And then you don't reply back. And that's weird to me. But I guess what I'm finding is that a lot of people don't check their emails. And so uh, the other lesson for the James Arnold Taylor podcast this week is check your email. <laughs> Um, and then I guess also some of it is, I guess sometimes it could go to the junk folder. Although generally speaking, if you send me an email and I reply back to your email, I don't think it'll go to junk. Uh, and if it does, your settings are a little funky, but here's the other thing for me. I check my junk email every day too, because a lot of times stuff that isn't junk goes into the junk folder. I had four things in my junk folder, for example, uh, before I started this podcast this morning, that should not have been in my junk folder and I moved them. So uh, it's strange to me. I have friends where I'll look at like their phone, like they'll hand me their phone to do something on it and I'll look down at their email part and there'll be that little red circle. And I, I kid you not, I have seen some people's phones where it'll be like 345 unopened emails. I'll be like, how in the world? I mean, you're talking about ones that are probably years old that you just never opened. How do you, I mean, yeah, you do that little preview thing, but... So open it, open it and delete it. Then <laughs> everybody is, is, is unique. That's the other beauty of it all. See now I, I'm, I'm saying what I would prefer in life. This goes back to our whole conversation of agree to disagree. And you may go, yeah, James, that's not how I work. And I go, okay, that's fine. But for me personally, it would drive me crazy to, to look at my emails and see, you know, 25 unopened emails or, or three, I mean, like three, 400, I've seen that on, on people. It's like unbelievable to me. And if you're one of those people, wow, <laughs> that's nuts. But anyways, I'm sure you have a system and you're working it out. So there you go. Uh, so, uh, Nathaniel, uh, has, has since checked his email and seen that I don't want to be called Jimmy. So now he calls me Jat or James. And that's all good. And see, we agreed to disagree agreeably. And no, we didn't actually. We we agreed, actually. We agreed that there was no disagreeing. Um, and that's the beauty of life. Isn't that really, I think, you know, I think that that's really what all of us really ultimately want is, and that's, that's the part that kind of breaks my heart with where we're heading in this, um, this, this time period of life where we're all disagreeing so much is I think everybody really has a heart to be heard and to be agreed with. And what we all, if we could all just learn that sometimes somebody disagreeing with us is more helpful than them agreeing because it's going to allow us to learn and, and live and find out new things better than if everybody just agrees because we don't want to hurt someone's feelings or because we feel like we'll be an outcast if we actually speak up. That's, it's a sad, sad time in that, in my, in, in my opinion, that too much of that is happening. Uh, and there's, it's reverse bullying now too, because there's, they're, they're getting on social media, they're getting in places and they're, they're making statements and labeling people with names and, and calling people things. Um, and that's bullying because if you're not really fully hearing everybody, because you cannot, I cannot blanketly state uh, you know, anybody that doesn't believe the way I believe or anybody that thinks, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi isn't the coolest character in the world is this or that or the other is a obiphobe. <laughs> um, you can't do that. You can't do that because we don't know everybody's story. And that goes back to don't judge everybody. And I think that that's the craziest part is that most people that are 
shouting the loudest are actually judging more and they're saying, don't judge, don't hate, don't bully. And, and if you do, you're this, this, this. And in that regard, they've, their whole argument falls apart because they're doing what they're saying not to do. And that part saddens me that that's where we're at kind of uh, in a lot of places in the world. So that's my goal on this show is to get you all to see it's totally cool to disagree with somebody. And, and you can still love them and be a part of their life and, and, and still try to get them to see, look, I mean, you know, for me personally, what is the, the, the one goal for me as a human being is to show people Christ. It is. I'm a Christian. I'm not going to lie about that. I can't, I can't lie about that. And I, I'm, you know, do I believe it's okay if you believe whatever you believe? Yes, I, I do because I, 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 I'm not going to manipulate anybody, but what is my heart? My heart is that everybody would believe the way I believe. My response should never be, yeah, well, you're wrong. <laughs> so I'm always open to hearing, right? And then you have to then take that. And that's, I mean, that's debate. And that's all of that is then you have to then go, well, let's look at the logic and let's look at the science. Let's look at the this and the that and the other. And it's all got to come together. But, you know, so those arguments and those, uh, those are huge. You know, you have to really be like in the headspace and the place to then get into those discussions with people. It, I'm, I'm literally getting a little dizzy right now at the thought of it. Because there's a part of me that goes, oh God, James, don't even say that on the show because now people will go, oh, well, if you believe, and it's like, it starts up that whole thing and you just go, no, 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 no. I'm just, let me go back to, I'll just, let me just, let me do Obi-Wan Kenobi. Forget I said anything. It'll use the Jedi mind trick. Like, <laughs> but that's, um, but the, the end goal is, 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 it's a beautiful thing to know what you believe and why you believe it and, and, and to have, uh, to have a meaning in that and for, for it to make, mean something to you on a level to where you are passionate enough to try and, um, show other people the beauty of that. Because the reason I'm a Christian is not, uh, for many of the reasons that a lot of people I think have labeled Christians to be. But because I have a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with the coolest being that ever lived and still lives, and that's Christ. And uh, he's just the coolest. He's the coolest dude ever. And uh, because he doesn't judge, he had the right answer for everything. And he loved unconditionally and with grace. And he sacrificed himself uh, to show that. And that's the real Jesus. So all the Jesus that you guys may hear about in other places uh, is through people's eyes and perceptions and voices and descriptions that are filtered through them. See, I try to give you unfiltered Jesus, not filtered through James. I can only, the only filter is through my experience with him, which is that he is grace-giving, non-judgmental, non-bullying, hears everybody, weighs all sides and is, is okay with being wrong if he was wrong. But the coolest thing is, is he never was. <laughs> so anyways, um, and that's, so that's then, that's my model. Cause see, I don't have a father and I never knew my father. So I don't have a role model in that. I don't have any mentors that really have um, stepped up. I had my, my band teacher in school when I was a kid and he mentored me through that time of life. But, but God is my parental figure. And I look up to God and I learn every day new and exciting things about him. And when I read the Bible and when I study and I listen to sermons and podcasts and I talk to people and I read your comments here and I, 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 I look at life. I look at life as this gigantic experience to take things in good, bad, indifferent, and know that it's all going to be okay. I think that that's the other biggest problem that we're, we're not allowing people to, to know is that it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to feel this way. It's okay to feel that way. It's, it's okay because all of it is a part of life. It is all a part of growth. I didn't, I didn't just wake up, you know, I didn't wake up one day with all these thoughts. It's a learning process. 
and my life is, you know, I'll be 50 in a couple of weeks here in a few days or now, or whatever, July 22nd. And today is the, what, the ninth? It's the ninth. So I've only got a few more uh, days of my 40s. <laughs> And then I'll be 50. And I'm not sitting here going, and because 50 is so old. Because, you know, I, I know people that are in their 70s and they go, oh, my goodness, 50 is nothing. <laughs> uh, to be 50 again. Um, but I will say, uh, I believe what I believe and how I believe because of years and years of living. So if you're in your teens right now, man, that's great. Take it in and enjoy it. Don't think you know everything because you don't. Just like I don't know everything. And in fact, nobody knows everything. Nobody does. Um, and be willing to be wrong and know you're going to learn and grow and take so much in in life. It's like what a beautiful adventure you have ahead of you. So don't give up. Please don't give up. That's the ultimate goal of this show. If I could, you know, I do every voice in the world, I, you know, whatever, I would just have Hank. Hey, Hank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I know where you're going to. Yeah, Hank, I would have Hank say, for you listening that's young and you're trying to figure things out and you feel like nobody's hearing you, I say, hello, 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 hello. I'm hearing you. Don't give up. Yeah, yes, uh, that's right, Mr. Hank. Yes, you know, I would say, and, and I'm a young, I'm a young intern man, and, 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 and I say, don't give up. And Obi Wan Kenobi says, don't give up. And Fred Flintstone. And Johnny Tess says, totally don't give up. Uh, don't give up in life, because you are you. This is truer than true. There's nobody more you than you. I kind of blew that. It's, that's not exactly how it ends, but, um, there's nobody you more you are than you that's a dr seuss quote that i kind of mangled but uh the point is is you get you get the point um if you're feeling frustrated if you're feeling wrong if you're feeling beat up by somebody today don't give up and by you maybe maybe you're in an impossible situation with some people there are impossible situations with people i've been in those with with people in relationships people that can't be wrong see and in turn, a lot of times our instinct is to then turn it around and go, well, then I won't be wrong either. But uh, that's just going to put that on somebody else and you don't want to do that. So learn to be wrong, have it be okay, and know that, know, know that you don't ever want to give up. I say that from personal experience where you just throw your hands up in the air and you go, wow, please don't give up. Please know you have a place here at the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. And please know all of you that are listening that are like, yeah, James, and that's why I need you to do this show weekly. I would love to get back to this show weekly. Um, but right now, I'm taking a bit of a hiatus because, again, it's summer and stuff. But also because as a creative person, and many of you are creative and artists, you know that you cannot, it's not something you can just turn on and do. Um, and so for the last few weeks or so, that creativity to do this show and to have a topic that I feel is important enough or entertaining enough or what have you uh, just hasn't been there. And so I'm not going to just get on here and just do a bunch of voices and all of that if I have nothing to say or that I feel is negative or whatever, you know. And so, you know, uh, I, uh, so I'm taking a bit of a hiatus from the show with the, th the thought and the hope that I will record as many episodes as I can so I can get back to a point of then. So let's say I record six episodes. I take off a few weeks and I record six episodes. Then I can come back weekly because then I can be caught up. But eventually, you know, I was caught up like that for a while uh, earlier and then things catch up and, you know, so it's, it's hard. It's hard to, uh, to do this on a regular basis because I want it to mean something every time I turn this microphone on and I want it to help people. Because I can do all the voices, but really at the end of the day, if I'm not helping you and I'm not, I'm not teaching you something and allowing you to grow and learn and giving you some type of lesson, then I'm not doing my job. I'm not doing my job uh, because I feel like that is my job here. Uh, the rest of, see, and, and why, why do I say that? Because the rest of my life and my world is filled with stuff that is just to entertain you, doing cartoons and video games and voicing stuff. And that's just solely to entertain you. And... I don't get to then 
teach really anything in that. And a lot of you can say, well, no, I learn a lot from Obi-Wan or from, you know, Ratchet and Clank or, you know, whatever there's lessons in life, Final Fantasy and stuff. That's true. That's great. But that's ultimately not the goal of that. Ultimately, the goal for most of those things is to just entertain you. And so this is the one place where I, I get to do more than entertain. I get to actually hopefully inspire you to do more in your life. Okay. So, you know, I have completely forgot uh, to say that this week's episode uh, is sponsored by my good friend, Alan Arnold and his book, The Story of With. I'm holding his book in my hand right now and I'm actually holding it up towards the microphone <laughs> as though you could see it. Um, so yes, the James Arnold Taylor podcast uh, for the next few uh, episodes, at least will be sponsored by The Story of With. And uh, Alan Arnold's book is uh, The Story of With, A Better Way to Live, Love, and Create. Please go to Amazon.com and check out The Story of With. It's a great book. It is a great book. Um, it's uh, as Let me read one of the things on the back here. It says, Your Invitation into Deeper Identity, Intimacy, and Imagination with God. Like Finding the Place You've Always Longed to Be. That's from James L. Rubert, best-selling author of The Long Journey to Jake Palmer. Um, let's, let's see what other people are saying about the, the book, the story of with, let's see what this guy, James Arnold Taylor. Ooh, yeah. I'm actually in the book. I give a, I have a, uh, a review. My, my, uh, thing is we all have at least one thing or a hundred that we'd like to improve, change, or simply rid ourselves of this allegory, because the book is an allegory gives us practical tools while entertaining us and reminding us that our best way to freedom is to actually free ourselves from ourselves and let God in. It's a story that truly takes us somewhere new and brings us back changed and prepared for the dreams and goals we've put aside for too long. Alan Arnold has tapped into some core issues of all of us that want more, but expect it differently than we get it. That is what I said about the book, The Story of With, and I hope you go to amazon.com today and buy your copy of The Story of With because Alan Arnold has written a great book, a very practical guide to learning about yourself and about your dreams and goals and how to do them along with the creator as your greatest partner. And so I really, I highly recommend you get, you either get the, uh, the, the, the actual book, the actual, you know, soft cover book here that I'm holding in my hand, or you get the Kindle version or you get the audio version. There's so many ways you can experience the book, the story of with, and that is our sponsor here on the James Arnold Taylor podcast. Alan Arnold's The Story of With. Go to Amazon.com today and get it. If you're somebody that listens to this show, there's no reason why you should not get Alan Arnold's book, The Story of With, because it goes right along with what this podcast is all about. And that is it for the podcast this week. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, know that, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're going to come out sporadically here for now because it's the summertime. I'm trying to enjoy as much time as I can with my daughter and my family. And I'm going to a lot of different Comic Cons, and that makes it very difficult for me to record the shows. And uh, I was working on my movie, but my movie is uh, actually on hold and probably indefinitely on hold. But uh, that's a story for another time. Uh, but uh, so for in the meantime, I'm going to just try to get those creative juices flowing here and uh, create as many more episodes of the podcast as I can. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I do hope you go to iTunes if you're listening on iTunes and give me a nice review. Please give me a nice review. I will read it uh, more than likely here because I've, I've read through most of the reviews on iTunes. So if you want to hear your review read, uh, you know, give me a nice review on iTunes and please give me a five star rating. And please, if you're listening on YouTube, please, please, please listen to the entire thing before deciding you're going to give me a thumbs down if you really didn't like it. And if you really didn't like it and you give me a thumbs down, please go to the comments and explain why you're giving me a thumbs down, why you feel as though... Because again, in my opinion, a thumbs down rating is to say, this was worthless, this was no good, this was this was bleh. Don't even bother listening. And if you really truly feel that, well, I, I do want to know. And I would love to engage with you and see... Uh, if we could come to some, uh, uh, you know, agree to disagree agreeably. Uh, but so don't just click thumbs down because you don't like me or because I voiced a character at one point in your life that you didn't like or something. 
uh, as that one person that is giving me the thumbs down so often does. So, uh, but please consider giving me a thumbs up if you liked the show and a nice little comment because I love that stuff. And please consider subscribing to the James Arnold Taylor uh, YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook uh, at Jat Actor, J-A-T Actor. You can also follow this here show, the James Arnold Taylor podcast at the Jatcast on Twitter. And uh, I, I did a little poll uh, recently on that. We'll talk about that maybe on one of the next episodes of uh, what parts do you like of the show and stuff. And I did that just for fun. I just wanted to make sure that people did like the inspirational parts. I'm not going to, you know, most of you said, oh, I like both uh, the entertaining, the Star Wars and the voice acting stuff and the inspirational stuff. And um, and I, I knew that, uh, but I, I wanted to just get a, a, a feel for how many people like the inspirational stuff. And and overwhelmingly, uh, that's the uh, that was the one that won out. People love the inspirational stuff. So that's why I still do it. And I thank you all for that. I thank you. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening to this show. I really do. And uh, I, I hope and pray for the best for you this week and for between now and the next time we meet here on the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. I, I pray for success for you, for the best for you, uh, for uh, in, uh, just happiness and joy. And remember, there's difference between happiness and joy. That you experience happiness regularly, but that you feel joy always. And that is, well, I guess we need Mr. Announcer Guy to come in and do the legal mumbo jumbo, Mr. Announcer Guy. Yes, James. Do that thing you do. Talking to myself, the James Arnold Taylor Podcast is a production of Yumi Go Inc. Recorded at Jet Studios. Engineered, written, recorded, and produced by, you guessed it, James Arnold Taylor. All voices are parody and should be construed as entertainment only. All music and sound effects used with permissions and licenses through backtracks, digital juice, production tracks, and partners in rhyme. James Arnold Taylor's Talking Myself, the podcast, copyright 2019, all rights reserved. Well done. It's as though you've recorded it beforehand and it plays. Shh, don't give away the secret. Oh, I think they already know. I know. All right. Hey, Mr. Announce Guy, you have a great week. Are you going to go uh, go to the beach? And put on your Mr. Announcer Guy bathing suit and jump in the water and all that? Yeah, man, why not? Okay. <laughs> all right, if it's sunny and there's a beach near you, then everybody go out to the beach and get some sunshine. But, ooh, put on the sunscreen. Protect yourself. And thanks for listening to the James Arnold Taylor Podcast. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Goodbye. <laughs>